went wrong with throwing my wife a birthday party and royally pissing my mom off? My wife and I are currently staying with my parents because we just couldn't afford the cost of living in this area. We are both currently looking for better jobs and or something cheaper, but it is what it is right now. My mom and wife share a birthday and there aren't words for how much my mom hates this. There were lots of whining in the beginning, jokes about can I just get a new girlfriend and as of right now, she does her best to avoid my wife the entire week of the shared birthday. Outside of that, she's a decent mother-in-law, mostly pleasant to her, but the relationship is surface level and they both could do without the other. My mom is currently at home recovering from surgery from a torn ACL, so she isn't doing much this year, though my dad got her cake, food, and easily thousands of dollars worth of presents. Okay, so her birthday is very important to her, I see. My wife has been feeling pretty down due to our living situation and some external factors, and I wanted to cheer her up. I asked my dad if we could have some people over. He said yes, but to be fair, I didn't specify it was for a birthday party. I'm not sure he even remembered it was my wife's birthday as he is totally disinterested in her and he was in the middle of doing stuff for my mom who was acting very princessy about her surgery. I invited our closest friend and set up a nice little party for my wife. At some point, my mom did come down and realize what was going on. I saw her look at the decorations and cake and she looked pissed. My dad quickly ushered her away and promised they would go out when she was better, but she said it wouldn't count. My dad came back and muttered to me that I'm an asshole for doing this and called me insensitive and a mooch. He's a mooch? Really, dad? When you're the one who's buying her thousands of dollars worth of gifts and like protecting your daughter doesn't even exist, but he's the mooch? Okay. He came out an hour later and shut the party down as he claimed we were being too loud. I don't think we were, but it was getting late, so I didn't mind too much. My wife loved it and had a great birthday. I fully intended on cleaning up myself, but was too tired to do it that night. My mom came down in the morning and saw the things still up and got pissy again. I was in the process of cleaning them and told her not to worry, I would take care of it. She just glared at me and stormed off. My dad came back down and berated me for throwing it in my mom's face that my wife got a birthday party and she didn't, and told me he can't stand me and can't wait for us to leave. I told him they are both being crazy and my mom doesn't own the date. He shot back that I tricked him as he didn't realize it was a birthday party, to which I laughed and said maybe he should know his own daughter-in-law a bit better. He complained to some family and now my aunt and her husband are calling me an asshole as well. To be clear about the mess, my mom only cared because she saw birthday stuff. She has never in her life cared about a mess. She once threw a handful of glitter in her own living room. I only brought it up to let her know I wasn't planning on leaving it for the housekeeper as I thought that would be disrespectful. Am I wrong for canceling the plans for Thanksgiving after my parents called my brother's baby their first grandchild? I, 32 female, have been with my wife Ava, 34 female, for 8 years now, but we've been married for 5. She was a single mom of 3 kids when we started dating. She had two daughters, now 10 and 12, and a son, now 16. I've watched these kids grow up. I've read the bedtime stories, done bath time, the first days of school, PTA meetings, all of it. I very much consider them to be my kids and they've been calling me mom for almost 6 years now. My brother Ivan, 28 male, just had a baby girl with his fiance Sarah, 27 female. I love my niece and my kids adore their cousin. My kids have been the only grandchildren on my side of the family since Ava and I got together and there's never been a moment where my kids and my wife were treated like they didn't belong. My brother is their uncle, my mom and dad are their nana and pop. The kids see my family as their family and I always thought that my family felt the same way about them. The kids and I were over at my brother's house just hanging out and my parents ended up dropping by with gifts for my niece. Ivan laughed when he saw the toys and told my mom and dad that they're going to end up spoiling her rotten. My mom said since my niece is their first grandchild, of course they have to spoil her. My kids were sitting in the living room and all of us and my youngest daughter looked hurt when she realized what my mother said. My son and my 12 year old didn't fully react to it but I could tell it bothered the both of them so. Sarah spoke up and said, oh you mean first grandbaby, not first grandchild. My dad shook his head and replied that my niece was their first grandchild. I didn't want my kids to keep sitting there and listening to that, so I handed my son my keys and told him to wait in the car with his sisters. When they were gone, I asked my parents why the hell they'd say that my kids weren't their grandchildren, and my mom said they couldn't be their grandchildren because they weren't really my children. My wife and I were going to be hosting Thanksgiving at our house this year, but I told my parents that if they didn't view my kids as their family, then they could just host a meal at their own house with their real family while I spent the holiday with mine. I left before they could say anything else to me and my wife and I reiterated to the children that they will always be my kids and I will always be their other mom, regardless of our DNA. My brother is pissed at me now because he thinks I reacted too harshly and that I should try to see where my parents are coming from. My mom texted saying that she and my dad love the kids but they still aren't their grandchildren and she hopes that we can come to understand that because she doesn't want this to ruin my niece's first Thanksgiving. I haven't replied back. I meant what I said but I'm worried that maybe I'm reacting too harshly. Am I wrong for leaving my mother-in-law's funeral after my husband lied to me? So my mother-in-law, my husband mom, 
passed away two weeks ago. She lived hours away in her hometown and we had to drive six hours to get there and attend the funeral later. At first, I didn't want to go and the reason is because of my brother-in-law, Michael. He's my husband's half-brother. Mother-in-law isn't his mom. Michael and I had some issues in the past that I will not elaborate on. I went low contact with him, then full on no contact. I asked my husband if Michael was going to be there and he said it was a no-brainer since he and mother-in-law had a close relationship. I didn't want to go and my husband argued about it for hours, then came home later and said that Michael would not be there due to travel issues. He lives in another state. I decided to go with my husband, but later on, I was shocked to see Michael walk up to us with his wife and daughter. I froze in my spot and looked at my husband because he lied about him not coming. I did not confront him because they embraced each other and started crying. His wife was watching as I turned around and walked away. I went to a hotel and stayed there. My husband called right after the funeral and was lashing out, calling me ridiculous and unbearable for pulling this stunt and for walking out of the funeral and leaving him there alone. I said he lied to me about Michael's presence at the funeral and he wasn't alone. Apparently, he had his family with him. He got loud saying that I was insane to expect his half-brother to miss the funeral of his stepmother and told me to get a clue. I felt so unsaid that I started crying when he said that I was useless. I packed and went home, but he further argued that I showed no empathy or support by not only walking out of the funeral, but also going home as well. We argued when he came home and I explained again how he lied to me, but he kept saying that it was illogical to expect Michael not to show up. He told me that I was stuck up and need to get over myself. So am I wrong for leaving after I felt uncomfortable by Michael's presence? Edit. It doesn't matter what Michael did and what issues we had. A lot of family were calling me harsh for the no contact, but that's the boundary I put and it should be respected no matter the reason behind it. When Michael first saw me, he looked at his wife and she looked at me like she was watching my reaction. There were kids around and I tried to act as calm as I could. Okay, I did some digging to find out what the reason was that that she had this boundary with her brother-in-law and it's as stupid as you think it is when her husband's father died there was a disagreement about who inherits the house his half-brother got it and her husband didn't want to fight it but she did and so that's why she goes no contact with him because she wanted the house even though it's not like her place to ask for the house so with that, do what you want with that information. That's why she's mad at him. There's no, I, I would give respect to like something like that's a boundary I want to set. Like he did something wrong to me. I get that. But it's about inheritance that wasn't even yours. Your husband wasn't mad about it. Why are you? Am I wrong for sharing my son's teacher's Instagram account with the other parents? My son is four and this is his first year in preschool. His teacher is called Mary and she's roughly in her early 30s if that matters. We first met her on Monday when dropping him off and I didn't get the best vibes from her, so I looked her up on social media. She posts provocative photos and is very active politically, going to marches and events and stuff like that. The vibes were already far from immaculate, but what I saw made me dislike her even more. I talked it over with my wife and we decided to ask some of the other parents what they thought of her. We reached out to them and created a WhatsApp group where we started talking and I shared her account there. It wasn't well received from most parents either, mostly because of the provocative photos. Nothing happened for a couple of days, but a fellow parent kept tracking her account and she saw that she had uploaded a selfie with three of her students on Thursday. The parents were furious about that and they went to the district supervisor first thing Friday morning. Since I was the one who started the group, he called me to confirm and hear my side of the story and he asked me if I could come to his office in the evening. I did. She was there along with a few other parents and we all started talking and trying to explain the issue. Voices were raised and at one point she started accusing me of stalking her and then sharing her account to perv on her with other dads. I was like, lady, I was just trying to see what kind of person is going to be teaching my son, but she wasn't having any of it and kept arguing. Things escalated even more and the other parents demanded that she be removed from the class. I didn't outright concur to join with them, but I didn't object either. The supervisor ordered her to take down the photos along with any she had uploaded from her previous students, but he hadn't reached a conclusion. Rumor has it that he's considering placing her in another school because the year just started, but we'll find out Monday, I suppose. Anyways, was I the asshole here? Should I just keep my worries to myself? There's an edit. I can't respond to everyone, so I'll respond here. Yes, the three kids' faces were visible. Their parents were among those of us who were present in the supervisor's office yesterday. Two, I wasn't the one who found the pictures. Neither those of the three kids nor those of previous students. Provocative meaning thirst traps. If that's giving me pause for someone's credibility as a teacher makes me an asshole, then I guess I'm an asshole. Four, she's participating in a far-right party's event. I don't really vote or care about politics. I just don't like that particular party. I don't even live in the U.S.